was the company's announcement that it plans to refloat on the stock market that took most of the attention. The retailer says better decision making and in-store design helped overcome the economic conditions of the past 12 months. Well, for more on this, we're joined by the independent analyst Roger Montgomery. Roger, great to have you in the studio. Thanks, Thanks for it. your time. It's a pleasure. Now, just firstly, I mean, there was no real surprise. There have been a lot of speculation reports that this IPO announcement was coming. What about the timing, though? Did that surprise you? No, not at all. I mean, now, now is the time to sell a business. You know, the time to sell a business is when you're going to get the maximum possible price. There's a terrific saying in the industry, feed the ducks while they're quacking. Um, and that seems to be the case. You know, they're, they're, they're going to get a much better price selling today than they would have uh, had they been forced to sell for whatever reason in, in March. But clearly, that's not the case. Now, your view is quite interesting, is that the profit that's going to be made by TPG is going to be bigger than what's been reported. Just what sort of numbers are you looking at here? Well, it's pretty much the entire proceeds of the float um, will go to uh, TPG Newbridge. Um, they bought the business some years ago at $1.4 billion. They put in $400 million of their own money, of equity, uh, and a $1 billion were borrowed. But in that first year that they owned the business, they had a, they had a clearance sale, which people might remember, and they, they netted $160 million from that. Uh, and they also sold the Burke Street, the famous Burke Street store in Melbourne, for $600 million. Uh, so, they, so there was $600-odd, $700 million um, that they got from the sale of those two, the, the sale and, and the sale of the property. Um, then they paid themselves a dividend and, and they lodged that information with ASIC and they paid themselves a dividend and a capital return, which basically gave them $560 million back. So they put in $400 million of equity and within the first year they'd paid themselves back the $400 million out of 20 or 25% return. So, they, so they've got a free carry. So they've got a business with $3 billion turnover and they didn't pay anything for it after the first year. Um, so, so all of the proceeds that they get from this float, and there's some numbers being going around, you know, $2 billion or, or thereabouts. Um, minus about $300 million to pay down some debt. They said that it's going to float with about $400 million of borrowings. So $300 million, because there's $700 million there now of borrowings, so $300 million will pay down the debt. The remainder is going to the vendors. So it's, a, it's a, what we call an infinite return on equity. Right, there you go. So they're going to do obviously very well out of it. I mean, what role do you think will debt then play in this float? At well, all, and, and what we, level of debt we, do you think? Had they left it with a billion dollars of debt when they floated it, that would have been, you know, Cynic might have said, that's a little bit greedy. Um, but they've left, if you like, half the debt or 40% of the debt that they started with is staying in the vehicle. What will be interesting is the makeup of the debt. So generally what happens in these things, we, the investors, are paying them $2 billion. So we're buying a business for $2 billion. That, that, that has to be reflected in the account somehow. It's likely that that'll be reflected as goodwill. Um, I often refer to it as, as hot air. You know, goodwill is only goodwill when the business is going good um, or well. And if it's not going good or well, then it's not goodwill and ultimately it gets written down. But let's, let, to their credit, they've done a great job. And the real question to ask is, um, in such a short space of time, if they've been able to turn the business around so well, what was previous management doing when they were at the wheel? What did you make of the profit results then today? I mean, up 15%. What's your view on, on yeah, that? Look, it, there are businesses that are doing a lot better than that. Um, it, but, but to turn around a boat that size uh, is difficult. It's a great challenge. And they've really done a phenomenal job to get the results that they have. Based on, if, if, we, if we extrapolate the growth in earnings that they achieved this year, we have suggested that they might get it next year, then I think the business is worth somewhere between $1.6 and $1.7 billion. That's, that's what I think it is worth. And if I could buy it at a big discount to that, well, maybe I'd consider it. It's, according to their numbers, it's generating a 30-odd percent return on equity. Um, so based on $108 million profit, there's probably equity of about $350 million. If you assume they're going to pay about 65% out as a dividend, they're worth somewhere between $1.6 and $1.7 billion. So that's up on what I thought this morning based on the limited information that I had. Um, now I've seen more fully the information that's been released. That's what I think is about the right number. Um, they'll probably try and extract a little bit more than that, and you can see that in the. You know, it's very clever to actually put out some information now and have the journo's all talking about 
what might be because that sort of that 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 if you like um, opens the road, moves the path of a of a float. So they'll they'll be sounding out the market, listening to what people like me are, are saying and and uh, and what the journos are saying. If they can get two billion or two and a half billion, that they'll go for it. Um, they'll get the try and get as much as they can. And do you think the appetite is there? Well, it seems like it. Car sales did very very well, you know, and and it's not worth the sort of numbers that were that it was listed at three dollars fifty. I think that business optimistically is worth about $2.70. Um, so they got $3.50 and it, it rallied um, after it listed. Uh, now, uh, I've got to say this though, valuing a business and predicting its share price are two totally different things. So you can, I can say it's worth $2.70, doesn't mean it'll ever get there. Um, it, I'm not predicting where the share price is going to go. I'm just saying that that's the number below which I'd be a, a comfortable buyer. But above that, well, I, I'd rather wait for something else. Just quickly as well, I mean, Bernie Brook seems to be very upbeat, and perhaps more so than it is. Why do you think that is? Well, he's about to float a big business. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I had a look at this. I had a look at the media release, and you know, it looks like they're already listed. Yeah. You know, the way it's laid out and, and presented, uh, you know, they're they're, um, they're preparing the, the the way to to be listed. And he's optimistic because he's floating a business. You know, it wouldn't surprise me that in the next few weeks we see a lot more Meyer advertising. Um, you know, and we see a lot more of Jennifer Hawkins and that sort of. Thing, so that people say, oh yeah, I got that, I got that um, prospectus in the mail. Yeah, I better do something about that. Look, they're advertising; they must be going well. You see that a lot. Yeah. yeah. And I guess that, uh, just lastly as well, I mean, the, the fact that that he is looking at that retail sector. I mean, do you think that sentiment has turned here, or is there reason for us still to be cautious? Look, look uh, you know, how many economists? You know, economists are never ever happy, are they? I mean, the economy is going, seems to be going very well. All the numbers look really good, and economists are saying, well, be careful, yeah. be careful. It looks pretty good at the moment. It actually looks pretty good. Um, Those checks have all run out. Yeah, well, they've run out, and things still look pretty good. So you know, we'll wait and see. I'm no economist, yeah. um, uh, but but I, you know, anecdotally, uh, things look okay. What really concerns me more than anything else, and I, I'm not trying to predict the economy. I really don't think that's something that you'll ever win doing. Yeah. Um, I look at individual businesses and I look at their values. And if I can buy those great businesses cheap, then I'll do that. Right now, the business that I think are great, not that many of them are cheap. I was here a few weeks ago on, on your station and, and I was saying JB Hi-Fi still look cheap, it's gone up since then. Um, Macmillan Shakespeare I thought was cheap, it's gone up since then. Um, they're not as cheap as they were and there are a lot of businesses that are way overpriced. Um, Meyer is a business that depending on, I need to see the prospectus but based on what I've seen so far I think it's worth about 1.6 or 1.7 billion. If it's a lot more expensive I won't be participating. If it's if it's around that price or less, then it'll be interesting.